Hello! In this video, I'll be reviewing section 3.2, Solve Two-Step Equations, which, of course, take more than two steps to do. In any case, let's go ahead and get started. Like terms. Like terms are terms that have the same variables raised to the same powers but may have different coefficients. Constants, numbers or symbols that represent specific values, are also considered to be like terms. For our first example, I want to identify the like terms of the expression 8x minus 3 minus 5x plus 1 plus 2y. Like terms have the same variable parts. So here's one that has an x part. Any others? Over here. Let's write those down. 8x and negative 5x. Are there any more like terms? Well, here we have a negative 3. Constants are considered like terms. Any other constants? Right here with 1. Let's go ahead and write those down. Negative 3 and 1. Any more like terms? Well, here we have something with a y variable, but there are no other terms with y variables. So we do not have any more like terms. Here's our answer. This next example is not a homework problem for you to turn in, but I want you to try to identify the like terms of this expression before I present the answer on the board. So go ahead and give it a try. This one was a little sneaky because I threw in a square for the variable. But you can handle it the same way as beforehand. Starting on the left-hand side, we have a constant of 10. And here's a constant of 2. Those are like terms. Negative 5 eighths w squared and 7 w squared are like terms. They have the same variable parts, including the exponent. We do not include negative 13 w because it's not being squared. So here is the answer. Combining like terms. To combine like terms, just add or subtract their coefficients and attach the variable or variables at the end of the term. This is also called collecting like terms or simplifying an expression. One way to visualize this concept is with apples and oranges. I can combine these apples in the apple basket because they are the same type of fruit. They can be considered like terms. Likewise, I can add these oranges to this basket because they also contain oranges. They're also like terms. I don't have a basket for pears, so there are no like terms for the pear. Let's see how this looks like in algebra. Here I'm going to let A represent apple. Two apples plus three apples is equal to five apples. Algebraically, 2A plus 3A equals 5A. How do you get this answer? Well, just add up the numbers in front of the variables. Those are called the coefficients. And you get 5. And then just write down the A. Don't do anything special to it. Don't square it. Don't write two of them. Just copy it down again. For the next example, let's let O represent oranges. If you have a basket of 10 oranges and you remove 6 oranges, you're left with 4 oranges. Once again, look at the coefficients. I'm going to subtract 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. Then just copy down the variable once again. Let's solve this two-step equation by combining like terms. First, let's identify them. There's a 6x and a 3x. To combine, just add up the coefficients, and you get 9x. 
everything else stays the same. Now do what we did previously. X is being multiplied by 9, so we divide by 9. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other side. 9's cancel. X is going to equal negative 27 divided by 9 is a negative 3. We solve the equation. Now let's see what the check looks like. To perform the check, the first step is to rewrite your equation, but in place of the x's, use parentheses, and then put the solution inside the parentheses. Then just simplify until you get negative 27 is equal to negative 27. Here I'm given a two-step equation that I would like to solve by applying the inverse operation in reverse order of the order of operations. Huh? Let me explain. When we try to solve, we want to get y by itself. We want to isolate it. There are two mathematical operations going on. We have multiplication and we have an addition. When you want to solve, you always perform the inverse operation to cancel it out. The problem is there's two of them. Which one is done first? Do we get rid of the 8 or the 3 first? Ugh. Well, we need to look at the order of operations that's going on in the problem. To remember that, we saw on Monday's lesson the order of operations. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. In the problem, the order of operations is as follows. We first multiply by 3, because it has a higher order of operations. And then the second thing is you add 8, because it has a lower order of operations. But for solving purposes, you switch the order and then take the inverse operation. In other words, instead of adding 8 is the last thing you do, you make the inverse operation, subtraction, and you make it the first thing for solving purposes, subtract 8. The very first thing in the problem was to multiply by 3, but now it becomes the last thing to do, and you take the inverse operation divide by 3. So these are the steps to solve our problem. Let's go ahead and do that now. So to solve this problem, our first step is to subtract 8 from both sides. We're left with 3y is equal to 3. Then we divide by 3. Threes cancel, y equals, threes cancel here too. What do you do? A number divided by itself is one. Performing the check is pretty straightforward. Just replace the y with one, and then simplify until you get 11 equals 11. Let's go ahead and solve this two-step equation by applying the same procedure as beforehand. Looking carefully, the variable has two things going on. There's a division and a subtraction. What's the order of operations? Well, according to this, division has a higher order of operations than subtraction. So in our problem, the first thing that was going on is that you divide by five. Second, subtract six. Now, to solve, we're going to switch the order. So instead of subtract, the very first thing is, find the reverse operation, add 6. The first thing was divide by 5, so now the second thing is, switch it, multiply by 5. Let's go ahead and perform these operations now. Our first step to solve is to add 6. And of course, add 6 to the other side of the equation. 6 is cancel, negative 4 plus 6 is 2. It's equal to z divided by 5. To remove division, you use multiplication. Five times two is ten. Here the fives cancel. I'm left with the z. And then switch places. Here's the check of our solution. Now let's solve this equation without writing all those words. Ugh. What is the order of operations? 
multiply by 7, then subtract 10. Multiplication before subtraction. So now let's perform the inverse operation in the reverse order. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Seven n is equal to 14. Next, divide both sides by seven. N is equal to two. When I perform the check, I can see I got the right answer. For our last example, I want to write an equation for the following verbal sentence. Then find the value of x. The value of y is 3 less than 4 times the value of x. Find x when y equals 13. In Monday's video, we went over in detail how to convert our verbal sentences. Let's now apply that knowledge to this problem. The value of y, well, that just means y. is means equals. 3 less than. Now recall, I made a really big deal about this. When you have something, some number, less than something else, that's a subtraction, but the number goes at the end, not in the beginning. Order matters with subtractions. So I want something, and then minus 3. Well, minus 3 to what? Well, it's 4 times something. 4 times something. What? Oh, the value of x. So let's just go ahead and write x. Let me go ahead and rewrite this. Make it a little bit nicer. It's just 4x minus 3. Find x when y equals 13. Oh, let's go ahead and replace the y here with 13. And everything else stays the same. Now we're ready to solve the equation. To solve the equation, let's first take a look at the order of operations. x is being multiplied by 4 first. Then 3 is being subtracted from it. So now to solve, what do you do first? Add 3 to both sides. Sixteen is equal to four x. Next step, divide by four. Sixteen divided by four is just four. Is equal to x or x is equal to four. When performing a check on a word problem, always go back to the original wording. Our verbal sentence states that the value of y is 3 less than 4 times the value of x. Then find x when y is equal to 13. We have the correct equation. We solved for x and we got 4. We put 4 into the equation and continue checking and 13 is equal to 13. 